Assalamualaikum everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this lecture today. The topic of the lecture is Earth Imaging from CubeSats, Challenges and Applications. And the presenter or speaker for the day is Ms. Mamuna Wahid. Ms. Mamuna Wahid has done her graduation in Computer Engineering from UAT Texla. Currently, she's doing her master's in electrical engineering with major focus on signal and image processing from the Institute of Space Technology, Islamabad. And she's working as a graduate research assistant in Small Satellite Technology Research Lab, SSTRL Lab, under National Center of GIS and Space Applications and CGSA. Thank you very much, Ms. Mamuna, for joining us today. You may continue with your lecture. Uh, thank you so much. And let me share my screen. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, is my screen shared? No. Yeah, it, it's sharing right now. It's sharing now. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum everyone and good afternoon. My name is Namuna Wahid and I have done my bachelor in computer engineering from UET Texla. I am doing my master's in image processing from Institute of Space Technology, Islamabad. And now I am working as graduate, graduate research assistant in small satellite technology and research lab, which comes under NCGSA. Today our session is, is on earth imaging from CubeSats and its applications and challenges. Before starting the session, I will give you a brief review, a brief uh, introduction of what SSTR lab does. Uh, so it is, a, it is an affiliated lab of National Center of GIS and Space Application and objectives include uh, the development of CubeSat training equipment, including the kits for the educational and research purposes. Uh, and uh, uh, here we are also delivering lectures and workshops and de demonstrations related to the satellite imaging, uh, satellite, uh, satellite uh, related to the satellite projects. The main project of SSTR is iCube N, and we will discuss it later in the next slides. Uh, for your participation in iCube uh, uh, N in, in development, you can contact your focal, your, a focal person in your school, college, and universities, or you can contact us through our given contacts. Uh, contents which, will, which we will cover in our uh, presentation will be CubeSats and a few IST projects, Earth imaging from satellites, application of satellite imaging, and challenges, challenges of satellite imaging. This, uh, here, this is CubeSat. Before uh, discussing about CubeSat, let's discuss the satellite types of satellite orbit. Uh, four common categories of satellite orbits, uh, which are classified by the altitude of satellites. First, uh, we can see uh, first uh, here is a low Earth orbit, which are at altitude between 200 and 1200 kilometers. Second, uh, the medium altitude Earth orbit, which is uh, at which is alti at altitude between 1,200 to 35,000 kilometers. Uh, then we have geostationary Earth orbits, which is more than 35,000 kilometers above. Then uh, high highly elliptical orbits, which are above 35,000. Uh, first, we uh, we will see what is CubeSat. 
satellite uh, satellite development is expensive and resource expensive satellites are very costly hard to maintain and not always reliable when we increase the resources the mass of satellites also increases for this purpose satellites can be built small to reduce the large economic cost of launch vehicles and the cost associated with the construction uh, these are uh, cubesats are small satellites uh, the uh, cube of 10 cubit volume which is one unit one, uh, which is one u they can be used alone this is uh, one unit of one u of cubesats and they can be stacked up to 25 24 units maximum maximum of 24 units Uh, but uh, it is very difficult to put all the subsystems in it uh, in it due to its smaller size. Uh, this kind of evolu uh, evolution helped the nation to start the side of educational satellite development project. These are launched uh, in low Earth orbit, which is LEO. Uh, since they are these are very small, most of the time they share the the launch with other satellites because the launcher is capable of carrying up to 500 kgs. Uh, here, this is a video which will give you more detail. What is a CubeSat? CubeSats are very small spacecraft that orbit Earth. As you might guess, a CubeSat is shaped like a cube, about four inches wide, long, and deep. That's called one unit, or one U. Small enough to hold in your hand, and very light, around three pounds. And like building blocks, units can be combined to make bigger CubeSats by stacking them into two, three, or even six units. Once in space, CubeSats can open up all kinds of tools, solar panels for power, communications antennas, telescopes, and more. CubeSats are great because they let schools, universities, and other teams launch their very own missions, and who knows what they'll discover. CubeSats are also made from standard, low-cost parts that are easy to get and tested for launch safety. Some NASA launches carry spacecraft that don't take up all the space on their rockets, which leaves plenty of room for tiny CubeSats. Build a CubeSat, Catch a rocket ride, and you become a space explorer. Um, I hope this video gives you more details about CubeSats. Uh, now, anatomy of CubeSat mission. Uh, we can see this is the launcher. Uh, then it uh, then it launches the different uh, set of CubeSats uh, into the space, and uh, by this way we can. Uh, uh, reduce the cost of launching the CubeSats. The launcher carries all the CubeSats and launch them into Earth orbit. This will be more clear to you with the help of the with the help of a short video. Let's watch it. How do CubeSats get into orbit? NASA's CubeSat launch initiative gives CubeSats a free ride on rockets that have room and fuel to spare. It's like a rideshare program. We're already going into space, so your CubeSat is welcome aboard. Once a CubeSat has a seat on a flight, it'll be loaded into a launcher container on the rocket. These containers have a long technical name, but let's just call them dispensers for short. Each CubeSat is stacked into the dispenser like a pea in a pod, with its power turned off until the right time during the mission. After the launch, once the rocket is at just the right elevation, the main spacecraft separates and heads on its way. Then it's the CubeSat's turn. A few seconds later, the dispenser door springs open. Another spring inside pushes the CubeSats free. Each CubeSat's transmitters turn on, and its power and other tools will begin to work. Then your CubeSat is ready for its mini mission in space. Uh, that video is about how the CubeSats are launched into the space. And uh, now we can see its subsystems. Cu uh, ge uh, uh, general jo uh, subsystems of CubeSats are antenna, transceivers, solar cells, magneto magno magnometer, onboard computers, power supply, and transmitters. Uh, here are few advantages of CubeSats, why they are uh, built. First of all, it is very simple technology, sim and which is simple to design, and it is more accessible to companies of all sizes. 
shorter development time smaller size and weight they use commercial components with relatively higher reliability to build cube sets uh great uh, it, uh, it provide greater data security cost manufacturing cost is very low can be can be developed in shorter time uh, more more uh, up to date technology risk distribution independence and control and uh, few more uh, here are some light projects by institute of space technology the first is i uh, pakistan's first cube sat satellite i cube 1 it is launched on 21st november 2013 and uh, it is launched 600 km above the surface of earth its mis- its mission is educational research and technological development first autonomous satellite uh, fully autonomous satellite and it is one u cube sat Uh, this is the one uh, i i cube one satellite the project is ss uh, triple s satellites uh, these are apsco asia pacific space cooperation organization satellite it's it is a constant constellation of three satellites ss uh, triple s1 triple s2 a triple s2 b uh and now uh, and here in sstr lab the, our team is working on its sub systems uh, its altitude communication and power systems uh these are the triple s satellites triple s1 triple s2 a triple s2 b constellation of three satellites uh the third one is i cube n these are cu- currently under development in sstr lab uh these are currently under development in sstr lab and cgsa it is working in, in collab- collaboration with various units of universities of pakistan uh now uh earth imaging from satellites this is the picture how satellite take pictures of earth satellite image processing satellite image processing is an important field in the research and development and consists of the images of earth and satellites taken by the means of artificial satellites firstly the photographs are taken in digital form and later are processed by computers to extract the information these are uh, used for research and development uh, the satellite uh, the satellite imagery is widely used to plan the infrastructures or to monitor the environmental conditions or to detect the responses of coming disasters special cameras and sensors are used in uh, set in cube sets to collect the information satellite imaging process this is uh, the satellite and this is target uh, which can earth and anything then it is uh, its data is collected on a ground station and it is then further processed or uh, for different applications and then it is ready to use uh let's see a video about uh, satellite image processing will it rain tomorrow how big will the wheat harvest be How much damage did the earthquake cause? We can answer questions like these with Earth observation, using sensors to learn about land, water, and the atmosphere. The sensors can be placed on the ground, attached to buoys, or flown on drones and aircraft. But most often, they're carried on satellites. Using satellites has many advantages. They can cover large regions, even the whole Earth. 
Monitoring can be systematic and continuous. For instance, weather measurements are taken as often as every 10 minutes. Satellite observations give us consistent, objective data that can be shared by many users. These data provide the information we need to make decisions and take action, to identify problems and protect the natural environment, to provide help after disasters, and to monitor our planet's systems and predict changes. Most Earth observation involves sensing some kind of electromagnetic radiation. Often, this is ordinary sunlight. Sometimes, it's infrared radiation. We can even use radar, where the satellite sends out radio waves and receives their reflections. The benefit of radar is that it can see through cloud and at night. Hundreds of Earth-observing satellites orbit the planet, and they're all giving us information we need to manage our world, now and in the future. Now it's more clear to you that how satellites take Im uh, images from the Earth and then it is sent to the ground station and further it is processed for different application. Uh, now uh, we can further move into the sensors. Before moving into the sensors, we can uh, we first discuss satellite remote, remote sensing consists of one or multiple remote sensing instruments located on one or more satellites for collecting information about an object uh, without being in physical uh, contact with the object. Here we have imaging sensors. Dif these are different sensors which are used on satellites uh, for sensing Earth. Uh, th uh, there are different sensors, imaging sens non-imaging sensors and radiometers. First, uh, we will uh, uh, have optical imaging sensors. Then, uh, Optical imaging systems use the visible near infrared and short wave infrared spectrums and typically produce different uh, types of spectral imagery. Then we have thermal imaging sensors. Uh, thermal imaging sensors, uh, imaging systems employ, employ mid to long wave infrared wavelengths. Then we have radar imaging sensors, non imaging uh, and uh, Non-imaging sensors include microwave, radiometers, microwave altimeters, magnetic sensors, and gravimeters. Uh, then imaging sensors. Cameras can also be used as a payload for taking images that can be used for different applications. Uh, there are many types of cameras that can be used in CubeSat depending mainly on its uh, application and its, uh, where it is to be used. However, due to mass, power and bandwidth constraint, constraints, small, uh, small low resolution CCD, which is a charge coupled device, and CMOS, which is a complementary metal oxide semiconductor as modules are generally used. Uh, which do not give us very high resolution images. In CubeSats, however, the trend is more towards CMOS as they consume less power and can be used for longer time in space, which is our main concern. Here are some cameras or camera sensors that have either been used in CubeSats 
and uh, or have the potential to be used in future cubesats. First, it is IDS UI 1.3 megapixel. Here it is, and then C3 1 A. Uh, this MCM 227 sensor. And this is PC6 uh, CCD color camera, microcam TTL, PBMV40, and uh, PBMV13, OV764 FB imaging sensor, HTCS 2020 sensor. Uh, then we have applications of uh, there we have few applications of earth imaging uh, the, the main are weather forecasting spying mission and uh, surveillance systems uh, the, uh, this is the picture which will give the different applications of remote sensing First, it is used in defense and intelligence for defense uh, for defense mapping, surveillance, and target tracking. Then, uh, in natural resources, agriculture and forestry, for forest monitoring, or uh, environmental monitoring, coastal monitoring, for different type of uh, environmental monitoring, and uh, for it can also be used for global warming research, for example, sea and ice studies, glacier studies, and uh, ocean studies. Then uh, it is also used for disaster response, like uh, we have uh, natural hazards, floods and landslides, landslides earthquakes, and uh, 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 conservation and research. It uh, purpose is uh, for conservation and conservation and research purposes for example, wildlife conservation, marine conservation, and archaeology. Development and construction. Uh, it is, uh, in development and construction, land, for, it is used for land development, land mapping, engineering and construction, geosciences, uh, cartography, hydrology, and oceanography. Other uh, applications are like uh, law law enforcement, city and urban planning, navigation systems, traffic monitoring systems, and many more. These are the images taken from satellites. And this, by these images, we can see different regions and different, uh, these are used for different applications. This, uh, this is an image taken for the cloud uh, for weather purposes. Like this is an image for uh, uh, image uh, for different uh, geographic features, including snow-covered mountains and volcanoes. This is a NASA image. By this image, we can clearly identify ocean, river, volcanoes, glacial lake, forest, agriculture, mountains, and snow-covered reservoirs, and this different. This is the, uh, another image of sediment colors, the sea near the mouth of uh, Zambezi River. It, is, uh, it clearly shows the sediments and open water and different. And this is the image which shows the forest variation. The forest. Uh, can you please mute your mic? All the participants are requested to kindly mute their mics. The forest covering the Great Smoky Mountains of the southeastern United States change colors from brown to green to orange to brown uh, as the season progress. This shows the variation, variation of the seasons and uh, how they change, uh, the earth changes its colors. 
uh, now we have challenges of uh, different challenges of earth remote sensing or earth imaging first uh, we can see that the, hand, uh, the earth imaging is a quite extensive and complex uh, phenomena handling large volume of data is a complex uh, uh, job and uh, 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 the data we take from satellites are usually in different formats and then uh, first uh, then processing it for our application uses is a quite extensive process and uh, it is it's, it's, processing is also very complex uh, big challenges are data possession data methodology and data application data transport is another important challenge and data storage for the storage we we need the storage and processing we need high computational power servers and uh, data delivery is also a big challenge data representation data fusion data visualization data identification data interpretation and data deployment is a really a big challenge Uh, here is the end of the session. You can have any question. Thank you, Ms. Mamana, for this wonderful lecture. If anyone has any questions, they can raise their hand or they can put their questions in chat. Okay, so everyone is requested to please turn on their cameras for a group photo. Uh, Ms. Momina, you can unshare your screen. Uh, no, sure. All the participants are requested to please turn on their cameras so that we can have a group photo. Just one more minute. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Momina, for this lecture. Our next webinar is at 2.30. The topic is Career in Space, the Pathways. I would really suggest everyone to please join this because it's really uh, informative for all of you. Thank you so much for your time and see you at 2.30. Thank you very much.